Hello again, everybody. Zag Attack is here with the attack line for Thursday, December 29th, 2011. Alright, let's kick it off with a little bit of healing update. Now, if you missed Monday's attack line, I said on Monday that Van Halen, after months and months of rumors, finally announced plans for the 2012 tour, promising the first set of tickets to go on sale on January 10th, where we got a little bit more details today. According to a Van Halen news site, a fan site, they reported that the first set of dates will be announced on January 3rd, and as I mentioned, tickets go on sale on January 10th. However, that's not the only thing happening on January 10th for Van Halen. Tickets will go on sale that day, but a new single and a new video for the new album will also be released on January 10th to coincide with the ticket sale date. It also, as speculated, it's now confirmed that the new album will be released on February 7th. Mentioned also on Monday that I got an email from the record label and from Van Halen's site themselves announcing the release date of 2 7 12 Speculate if it was a single release date or an album release date. Now it's an album release date since the single comes out January 10th. Now what we do know is the album is not called The, Re the Future. On an email announcing the date, it said The Future 2712. And it's confirmed that The Future is not the album title. So we do not have an album title yet or a single title yet. But we'll probably find those out in the next couple of days to come as we head toward that release on January 10th of the single. Can I wait to hear some new Van Halen? First new song of DLR since the Greatest Hits album, 96. And the first album of DLR, David Lee Watt, since 1984. So can't wait to hear it and hopefully I can be able to see him on the new tour. Now on the more music news, including an update on Lady Gaga. Seems that every day I have news on her. Monday, I talked to you about reviewing her new song to Little Monsters for Christmas, Stuck on Fucking You. And yesterday, I talked about her getting sued by an assistant for being on the paid. And also, her being on a Japanese New Year's show. Now it's, come, now it's more speculations about her New Year's Eve. As we all know, I mentioned this a few months ago, she was one of the very first acts to be confirmed for Dick Clark's New Year's Walking Eve. And now she has been confirmed by the mayor of New York himself, Mayor Rosenberg, that Lady Gaga will be pressing the button. She'll be dropping the ball down on New Year's Eve. She's going to press the button. That's cool. You know, can't wait to see that unfold, kind of. <laughs> Lady Gaga ain't the only one performing. She'll be also be coinciding with other performers from both Coast New York and LA with Florence and the Machine, Justin Bieber, Teo Cruz, Jim Class Heroes. I'm also hearing Beyonce from London. Also, Hot Chair Way, Pitbull, and Nicki Minaj. Fergie will be hosting. From Los Angeles. So, I have a gig on New Year's Eve, so it'll be interesting. I will be able to watch it totally because I got a gig on New Year's Eve during New Year's Eve party. Can I wait? It's going to be happening. Oh, yeah. Now, on some more music news involving Steven Tyler and Katy Perry. A little engagement news and divorce rumors. Starting with Steven Tyler. Now, Steven Tyler is reportedly engaged, according to a jeweler named Louie Watkin, he proposed to his longtime girlfriend, Erin Brady, who is 38, he's 63, and like I said, a jewelry designer who designed the ring is saying that, yes, it is true that he has engaged. Lori Watkin, the name of the jewel, said, having made Stevens jewelry for so many of the many past years, it was an honor to be part of his future. With all my love to Steven and Erin. It's now known that Aaron is wearing the five carat diamond sparkler that Stephen picked out. And it's set to a diamond band, platinum band, encrusted with glittering micro diamonds. 
both Steven and Aaron's publicists are not confirming anything or denying anything, but it is true. According to the jeweler, congrats to Steven on his, what is this, third or fourth marriage. Oh, third marriage. Yeah, third marriage. Congrats. Hope they last longer. Now, divorce rumors are spreading about Katy Perry and Russell Brand. Now, Katy was seen in Hawaii on her Christmas break not wearing her wedding ring. It was reported that she was in the water and took it off so it wouldn't get wet. But rumors became imploded. Rumors became more aroused when Russell Brand was seen walking around London without his wedding ring. No Katy or Russell have denied or the or confirmed any rumors at this time, but we'll see what happens in the new year, and hopefully this won't be the rumor signs of trouble and paradise for Katie and Russell. So there you go. Probably find out more about this in the next weeks to come, heading into the new year. Now, wrestling news. Before we get on down to TNA Impact Preview, the last Impact of the year, got to talk about Randy Orton. Now, Tuesday night, while well, shooting smack down in Indianapolis, Randy Orton suffered an injury during his scheduled match against Wade Barrett, a street fight, to be airing on this Friday SmackDown. The match was declared a no contest. After suffering a herniated disc on the L4 slash L5 level on the left side of his leg, that's resulting pain and weakness, according to WWE sources. He's going to take time off for rehab, anti-inflammatory medications, and physical therapy. That means Owen will be out for a certain amount of time of hearing six months. That means he'll be out for WrestleMania. Bad timing because we all know about the Del Rio just got injured. He was on war addressing his groin injury last, this past Monday. And now Orton's injured. He'll miss WrestleMania. Now, he was supposed to wrestle Wade Barrett over the week at the house shells, including the one last night in Detroit. Sheamus took his place, and I'm also in the offering refunds to anybody who wanted to see Orton. They always do it with top guys. Like if Cena and Orton's on a card and they don't show up, they do offer refunds and house shells sometimes. So, But Orton getting injured is a further step down for him. You know, he suffered a lot since losing the war out of the Mark Henry at Night of Champions this past September. Being in a feud with Wade Barrett, losing to him on SmackDown. Then at Survivor Series of all... Orton has got up an edge on Barry the last couple weeks, beating him a TLC, but still is a huge, huge misstep for Orton getting injured at this time. Anybody as big as Orton, despite loved or hated like Cena, bad time, especially if Cena may be turning here, hopefully. And Orton will miss Mania. I bet you everyone's like, yay, Mania without Orton. Now we need Mania without Cena. We almost had that once at WrestleMania. 24 ever thought, oh, Cena will be out for like eight months missing Mania. No, he came back by War and Rumble. That could be the case for Orton. They're going to say, oh, he's going to be out for six months. Then maybe he'll be back fast enough for WrestleMania. So there you go. But best wishes go out to Orton for his injury. Now, on to TNA Impact Wrestling Preview, the final TNA Impact of 2011. Here are the top five questions that must be answered tonight. Question number five. Who will walk out tonight as the TNA Knockouts Champion? Now, Mickey James, who did own a shot about a month ago at a Battle Royal, Knockouts Battle Royal, the determined number one contender, will get a title shot tonight against Gail Kim for the Knockouts Championship. Now, I bet you Gail may probably win with a little cheating, especially with help from the Brand newly appointed executive vice president of the knockouts, Madison Rain, being named that last week after Karen Jarrett got fired. Fired two weeks ago. I bet you, like I said, Gail Kim will probably win, especially if Madison's involved as the executive vice president. So there you go. Speaking of Madison, she's moving to claim to be firing Tess Marker and Taylor tonight after what happened last week. So we'll see if that transpires. Speaking of firing, so there you go. Question number four. What will go down the Wild Card Tag Team Tournament semifinals? Now, the final four have been revealed. And of course, those matches are 
Hamrick Young and old DB taking on Samoa Joe and Magnus. I said this last week, and I'll say it again. I said in my review last week that Hamrick Young and old DB, yeah, they're like the comedy team. They're going to advance to the semis, but they're going to lose in the semis to whoever they face. No matter who they face, Eric Young and ODB is going to be out tonight. In other words, Joe's going to kill you. Joe's going to kill you. I bet you he won't hurt ODB as much. But he'll probably muscle bust Eric for the victory. So I predict Samoa and Magnus will advance to the finals. And the other semifinal match will be Abyss and Scott Steiner. Teaming up with AJ and Kaz, taking on AJ and Kaz. Now, Abyss and Steiner, maybe Abyss may turn his back on Steiner tonight, and AJ and Kaz will win because Abyss is getting along with Steiner. Maybe it's just been handy to get along with Steiner so he can pretend that the team is back together, that Immortal is back together. But maybe Abyss may turn his back on Steiner tonight and cause AJ and Kaz to win. And of course, the winner of this tournament. We're taking on Matt Morgan and Crimson for the tag titles at Genesis. Speaking of Genesis, that leads me to question number three. Who win the best of three X Division series to advance into a fatal four-way? It's between Anthony Nice and Zima Iron. Two weeks ago, Zima Iron's cockiness got him the victory in match one. But his cockiness costed him last week with Anthony Nice getting the must-win and win them in match number two. Now it's the woman match. Tie breaking tonight. Between Nice and Zima in his best of three series, the winner will advance to a fatal four way for the X Division Championship at Genesis. Well, Jesse Sorensen, Kid Cash, and the champ Austin Aries awaits. Question number two. What will go down tonight's main event? As Kurt Angle takes it all BD. Now, Angle will be in the impact zone this week. Following attacking a bunch of tennis scenes in the ball last week to make a statement to James Storm for a rematch at Genesis. While Christopher Daniels, who teamed up with RVD last week, screwed him. Well, RVD kind of screwed with Daniels. So, we'll see what happens with RVD tonight against Kurt Angle. In question number one, speaking of Genesis, what will happen with Sting, Jeff Hardy, and Bobby Roode? Now, last week, Sting and Jeff Hardy won a Tag team street fight last week between Bobby against Bobby Roode and Bully Ray. With Jeff Hardy delivering a splash off the top rope through a table with Bobby on it, pinning the TNA World Champion. We'll see what happens with Dole Street tonight. We head towards the final event back of 2011 tonight at 9 8 Central, only on Spike TV. That is it for the attack line. I'll see you all later on tonight for my impact review. With that in mind, attacked. By the news from Zach. Thank you very much. See you all later. Yeah.